Hello and welcome to the Common Premises UN Info platform training. In this first video, we will be talking about the second step of the stock take, premises validation. This step of the platform aims at identifying all UN premises in the country. It is organized the following way. In two parts. First, the premises, where the premises validation focal point has three tasks. One, to validate pre-populated premises. Two, to add missing premises. And third task is to delete premises that were entered by mistake. But part of this step is also to add projects and initiatives. This is the task of three other users, the agency focal point, the CPWG members, and the CPC. So let's see what the premises validation focal point should first do on this step. The first thing to do is the validation of pre-populated premises. The list of pre-populated premises is here, all those premises. This list is imported from the UN SMS database. To find a premises to check data for, one can either scroll down the list like this, or use the search option by premises name like this. The data indicated in the inside of the, uh, of the premises should be completed if missing or amended if erroneous. The first step, the first data field to complete is the city. So for each of the premises, all data fields must be completed. First, we should verify if the premises is in the correct city. If the city is inexistent, there is two ways to add it. First, it can be found looking at the drop-down menu. But if the city is not present in the drop-down menu anywhere, it can be added manually clicking on cannot find your city and typing the missing city in the data field. Regarding the second step, the second data field, the compound. It can be, uh, the premises can be part of a compound and it can be selected in the drop down menu. If the compound name doesn't appear in the list, it can be added by clicking on not, not found in the list here. This name will be added to the list of compounds in the country and will appear in the dropdowns of compounds for all other premises. Here, let me precise that the fields where there is an asterisk here, such as a, for a city or for compound, are mandatory to complete. The data fields without an asterisk are optional to be completed. The next data field is the premises name. It should be the name of the premises as it is usually referred to. And the name should be unique to the premises. Then, the address. You should verify the address and modify it if necessary. The coordinates here will be automatically picked. You're able to refine the coordinates using the map function. Clicking on open map, dragging and dropping the pin to have a more precise location. The latitude and longitude will be automatically changing. In the status field, select active if the building is still under the purview of the UN, regardless if UN staff is occupying the building or not. Select inactive when the building no longer belongs to the UN. On the status details field, enter 
any other details, dates, or reason associated with the change of status. Once all data has been entered and the premises has been declared active, the premises validation focal point confirms the validity of the premises by approving it in the occupation approval data field. This can be done by selecting approved in this field. Once approved, each premises should be saved, clicking on this button. The delete button here should only be used in case of premises added by mistake or in case of duplicates in the premises list. When we click on save, and once all data has been completed and the premises is saved, the successfully validated premises will be marked with a check symbol like this. If an existing premises doesn't appear in the list, the premises validation focal point should do its second task, which is to add missing premises. This is done by clicking on add the premise here. And the same data fields should be completed as for the existing premises before clicking on create. With the validation of all the premises in all cities of the country, the premises validation focal point has completed his or her part of the stock take exercise. But as we can see on this diagram, in addition to the actions performed by the premises validation focal point, the rest of the team, agency focal point, CPWG members and CPC, add projects and initiatives as applicable. So we can start adding projects and initiatives. The three users in charge should click on Add Premises. Then select the face between the two options, project or initiative, and complete the data field. Select Project if a concrete milestone has been reached, and select Initiative when the project is still under discussion. For example, a discussion with the government for a building is an initiative, which will turn into a project when the building is identified and accepted by the UN. You can refer to Annex 1 of the manual for additional information on what consists a project or an initiative in for different consolidation modalities. The fields to be completed after are very similar to the premises field. But however, there are a few additional fields to be completed when adding projects and initiatives. First, it is the category of the project or initiative, which can be selected among those four choices. For some project categories, a source of funding field will appear where you will have to select an answer also among the different choices. Future actions or next steps can be indicated as a text, such as signing the letter of interest, for example. And finally, any other relevant documents can be uploaded for projects and if available for initiatives. To finish the creation of the project or of the initiative, it is now time to click on Create here. When data entry is complete and ready for quality assurance check, it is time for the CPC to lock the entire Step 2 premises validation. To do so, the CPC can click on Lock Step here. To ease data verification, Intermediary locks are also available for the other users that you might have seen, for example, here, lock premise. Now is completed the premises validation step with the different tasks of the different users. We can now move to the third step, the premises attributes step, where more information 
can be added for each of the premises, projects, and initiatives that were saved or created in step two.